Well, good evening. Welcome to Chapel again this Sunday evening. We're battened down here in North Wales against the wind and the rain. It's uh, winter's coming again. So, getting towards the end of this season of uh, online chapels, um, we'll, we've got one more next Sunday, and that will have been a season of 17. And if you want to watch more back again, you'll be able to do your binge watching, which uh, will last for about nine hours. So you're welcome to do that over the summer. So uh, Dave, with us again this Sunday, and if you remember, um, he spent a couple of Sunday evenings talking to us about Exodus and the story of Exodus, and he left us on a cliffhanger uh, uh, not last week, the week before. Uh, right, he told us that um, God has a rescue plan that, plan that that God cares for us, and we got to the point where Moses at the burning bush was going to be part of that rescue plan, and then we were left with a cliff here. Well, Dave later on is going to pick up that story, and then he'll complete it for us next week. Now, we were going to come back into school, or a number of our pupils are coming back in, and uh, the welcome uh, banner has been put up onto the gates. But sadly, because of the weather, and we're going to have to delay the coming back because we want to have the children outside uh, for a time rather than indoors for safety. Uh, but there we are. We're thinking very much about our children coming back for a few days in the coming week. Now, Georgina, and there's a picture of Georgina here in the chaplaincy. She spent um, time with us last year in the chaplaincy, and she spent a lot of time helping uh, the children and helping the pupils, and, and very interestingly, using the silver chalice as where to put the pens. Well, Christine, uh, Georgina has sent us uh, this message from... Uh, New Zealand, where she is now, and then uh, George uh, has also sent us a message uh, for this week as well. So here we are, the two Georges. Hi, Miss Watt here, uh, currently recording from New Zealand, which is pretty much the other side of the world. To say that this year has been a challenge seems like a real understatement but it's important that we stay strong and keep striving forwards. So I thought I'd try and use climbing as a metaphor. So we are starting the climb with a double foot smear, moving into a power dynamic move, which I believe was government's order to go into lockdown. This small section here is the crux of the climb. I believe that you were over the hardest bit, but there's still a long way to go and it won't be easy. I guess in times of struggle, you realize how strong you really are. You have two weeks left until the summer holidays. The old St. David's motto was never give up. I have to directly quote Miss Gray at this point. Keep up the good work, stay strong, keep resilient. Hi, my name is George Francis Eldridge. I'm a student at St. David's College and as you may know or as you may not know I have been doing a cycling challenge on a peloton which is like an indoor exercise bike um, and I have been doing 72 kilometers for seven days. The reason why I chose 72 kilometers is because NHS has been going around for 72 years and the seven days is because there are seven NHS trusts in all, in all Wales. So I believe the, the kilometers to, to the amount of years um, the NHS has been going around and the days to amount of trusts there are in Wales. Um, and, this, and the thing which actually helped me out with this most is my spirituality and the school ethos, which is never give up. Uh, and the thing which always inspires me to keep on doing what I'm doing, it's not just because I'm supporting the NHS, but it's because of this Bible passage, which is in um, Ephesians 
um, chapter 6, verse 10, and it's about the armor of God. And it reads this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on a full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with the feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me, so I will fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel, which I am ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. Well, so good to hear from Georgina again. And uh, thank you very much for sending the message in. And uh, George, um, you always focus us on scripture and your particular love for, for the Bible, and we're really grateful for that. And um, it, it's good to know that it's prayer, um, Bible, community that has been much of what has encouraged us and kept us going through this three-month, four-month period of time. And it, it feels as though we're beginning to come out again, but, but, but there's still that uncertainty lingering there. And we need to have that continued focus that um, although, while we don't quite know what's happening, we just need to keep going and have those things in focus that have really encouraged us and, um, and made it possible to come through. So thank you for that. Now, the next um, little feature is a, a creative piece by one of our um, past pupils, Gavin Mart. And a number of years ago, he went down to the beach and did some um, arts work and uh, creativity on the beach and the theme is a very strong theme of focusing on the creator God focusing on the role of Jesus now I encourage you to use this five minutes as a time of prayer as a time of reflection as a time of anchoring back into a relationship and your faith in God and times so this is Stan's man the Word was first, the Word present to God, and God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing came into existence without Him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness, and the darkness couldn't put it out. Every person entering life he brings into light. He was in the world, the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed, and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten.
flesh and blood that moved into our area. We saw the glory with our own eyes. The one of a kind glory, like Father, like Son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Thank you very much, Gavin, for sending that in or for creating that piece for us. And I hope that it, it's a vivid image for you that even when it just feels as if uh, God's not there, you know what he is? He is. So thank you for that. Now, um, something slightly different for our for worship slot this evening. We have got speech day coming up uh, next Friday. And we have a school hymn, which I, many of you uh, who are watching will know very, very well. And we decided to do this hymn in Zoom style. And this is the, the first um, demonstration to get everybody involved. And maybe when we've got it completed, we'll show the completed version next week. So this is the school hymn. And then Dave will come in straight afterwards to talk to us about the next bit of his story from Exodus. Thanks today, Lord, for that word, the word of life. 
completely forgotten uh, who I am. Uh, I'm Dave, just in case you have. Um, and I also hope you haven't completely forgotten about uh, the story of Exodus that we've been going through. Uh, but if you have, uh, I will quickly remind you, um, we've seen in Exodus so far that, that God's people are enslaved in Egypt. And we also saw, didn't we, that um, we saw Moses meet God in a burning bush uh, where God revealed his name and that he really cares about his people, the Israelites. Uh, but today, we're going to see what happens when God sends Moses back to Egypt to rescue the Israelites. Uh, but first, we're going to play a quick game of thumbs up and thumbs down. So question number one, who is more powerful, Batman or Superman? Thumbs up for Batman, thumbs down for Superman. Interesting, interesting. I think Batman's probably cooler, isn't he? But Superman is more powerful. Uh, question number two. Who's more powerful, Dumbledore or Gandalf? If you don't know who Gandalf is, you need to watch Lord of the Rings. Uh, thumbs up for Dumbledore. Thumbs down for Gandalf. Mm. I really hope most of you are uh, putting your thumbs down for Gandalf uh, because he's an absolute legend. Uh, but I get the feeling most of you will like Dumbledore more. Um, and question number three, this is starting to get a bit political. Uh, who is more powerful, Boris Johnson or Donald Trump? Thumbs up for Boris, thumbs down for Trump. I know George is American, so he's going to put Trump, isn't he? Of course he is. Uh, in the next few minutes, uh, we're going to be thinking about who is more powerful, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, or God? Exodus chapter 5. Um, let me read it out to you. Moses and Aaron, Aaron is Moses' brother, by the way, uh, they went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go, so that they may hold a festival to me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. Moses asked Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. We see that, don't we? But Pharaoh, we also see, says no. And then he actually doubles the workload of the Israelites in uh, the next bit of the story, making their slave labour even harder and even more painful. If you were an Israelite, uh, it would look like, wouldn't it, that Pharaoh is much more powerful uh, than God. Pharaoh is the one that is in charge and not God. But... The story isn't over yet, and we are going to see what happens next by watching a short clip uh, from a film called The Prince of Egypt, which is a brilliant film. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Um, and it, is, it tells the story of Exodus. Um, so yeah, enjoy the clip. Ramesses, let my people go. <laughs> Still gnawing away at that bone, are we? Carry on. You cannot keep ignoring us. Enough. I will hear no more of this Hebrew nonsense. Bring him to me. Moses! No! Take the staff in your hand, Moses.
Blood! Potem, hoi! Explain this to me! Ah! Rest assured, your majesty. Ah, uh, yes, we are going to demonstrate the superior might of our gods. Uh. <laughs> By the power of Ra! <laughs> Abandon this... Futile mission, Moses. I've indulged you long enough. This must now be finished. No, Ramesses. It is only beginning. But Moses, d didn't you see what happened? The priests did the same thing. Pharaoh still has the power over our lives. Yes, Aaron, it's true. Pharaoh has the power. He can take away your food, your home, your freedom. He can take away your sons and daughters. With one word, Pharaoh can take away your very lives. So we see, uh, don't we, from that clip that Pharaoh still resists. He still seems to be more powerful than God. The magicians could do the same thing that God did. He doesn't listen to the cries of Moses, the cries of let my people go. And can you imagine if Moses was speaking those words today, what they would sound like? Maybe it would sound something like this. COVID, let us out of lockdown. Let us see our friends and family again, please. Unshackle us from this constraints of what we can and can't do. COVID, please let us go. And at the moment, it can feel like coronavirus has the power over our lives, doesn't it? The pandemic takes away food from some people. Lockdown takes away our freedom. The virus takes away people's very lives. And for the Israelites, it would feel even worse than lockdown does now. And like the Israelites, who seems more in charge? If we were playing another round of thumbs up or thumbs down, I wonder what you'd say is more powerful at the minute. God or coronavirus. I'll let you think about that as we see what happens next in this next clip from the Prince of Egypt. To make you laugh was all I ever wanted. And even now, I wish that God had chosen another, serving as your foe on his behalf. It's the last thing that I wanted. This was my home. All this pain and devastation, how it tortures me inside. All the innocent who suffer from your stubbornness and pride. You who I called brother, why must you call down another blow?
Yeah, guys, they're the plagues. Uh, there are lots of plagues. There, there are nine that we've just seen. Uh, frogs, gnats, death of livestock, flies, hail, locusts, boils, darkness. The plagues were awful. And Pharaoh can't keep up. He tried to, but he was not powerful enough. Even the magicians who worked for him couldn't compete. Listen to chapter 8, verse 19. The magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not listen, just as the Lord had said. Can't we see just how powerful God is from these plagues? More powerful than the magicians, and more powerful than Pharaoh. God is more powerful than anyone or anything in the world. Coronavirus has caused lockdown. And it seems to be holding all the power. We all want to be free from it, don't we? And rescued from its shackles. Is there anything or anyone stronger than this virus that has brought the whole world to its knees? The answer is yes. God is still more powerful. He is still in control, no matter how much it feels like he isn't. He was more powerful than Pharaoh then. And he is more powerful than COVID now. Who knows how long COVID could go on for. It could be weeks, maybe months. Uh, I very much hope it's not years. But eventually, it will end. It will disappear. God is always more powerful. Because he will continue forever and ever. He doesn't ever change. So trust in his power to rescue his people. But... Pharaoh still hasn't let the Israelites go. They are still in Egypt. So you're going to have to wait uh, till next week to see whether Pharaoh will recognise God's power and let God's people go. Well, Dave, thank you very much indeed. And we'll look to the the unfolding of that story next week. It may be that um, the stream just stopped and YouTube didn't like um, the playing of that. But, um, it seemed to happen on my phone, but I'm not sure if you were seeing your side, so I hope that was okay in the end. So uh, there's a little message there about um, although things don't look as if they are uh, coming together, God is still working in the background. And that, in a sense, been the theme this evening. So let me finish with a prayer and a blessing as we move into this week. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement it gives us. And Father, when we can't always see what's going on and it feels very confusing, thank you for the assurance you are working in the background. Thank you for your faithfulness and your love and your care for us. And so be with us as we go into this week, I pray. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you in your homes, wherever you may be, into the coming week and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us again and look forward to seeing you next week for our 17th in this series of chapel services. Have a good week.